As we mentioned, our dinosaur of the day is Calindodromius zebicolicus. Calindodromius lived during the Jurassic in what's now Siberia's Kalinda River, and its name means Kalinda River Running Dinosaur. It was discovered in what we think is pronounced Zabaikaliski Cray in Siberia, uh, which is how it got its species name, Zabaikalikus. So that's in eastern Siberia. Kalindodromius lived about 160 million years ago, and it was small, about the size of a turkey or five feet long, and walked on two legs and had short arms. It had scales on its tail and shins and short bristles on its head and back. And like other early ornithischians or neo-ornithischians, it could run. But the biggest news of finding Kalindodromius was the fossil feathers. Previously, most of the good preserved feathered dinosaurs were on theropods. A paleontologist at the University of Edinburgh, Steve Brusate, discussed that a common ancestor of all dinosaurs may have had feathers. The idea isn't that new, but he thinks that these new plant-eating dinosaur fossils found in Siberia and China with their filament-like feathers are some good evidence as to dinosaurs having feathers. Other scientists have argued whether dinosaurs all shared a common ancestor with feathers or whether they evolved independently. So again, before the main dinosaurs that were known to have feathers were theropods, which are the ancestors of modern birds, and in China at least five types of feathered dinosaurs have been discovered in the past 20 years, but they were mostly of raptors, which again are the dinosaurs that evolved into modern birds. According to Pascal Godefroy, who was the lead author on the study describing Calindodromius, ornithischian dinosaurs had previously been found with simple bristles or quills, but scientists weren't convinced that they were really feathers. They believed that the new specimen of Calindodromius finally, quote, clinches it, and all dinosaurs had feathers or at least potential to sprout feathers. When a new fossil like Calindodromius is discovered, a lot of times you'll see clickbaity headlines like maybe all dinosaurs had feathers and things like that. But this is really not a very accurate depiction. It's not like we've now discovered another feathered dinosaur and it shows that everything might have had feathers because like we talked about in earlier episodes, sauropods, especially titanosaurs, would have had a lot of difficulty dissipating all of their heat that large animals typically have, and feathers would have made the problem worse. So if you look at modern large animals, they typically don't have very much insulating hair or feathers. So like an elephant or rhino isn't covered in hair, whereas something smaller is because it needs the insulation more than the large animal that's producing all the heat. Calindodromius had feathers on its arms and legs, and each feather had six or seven filaments joined together, so it resembled the down feathers of modern chickens. And this find also shows that these protofeathers may have been part of earlier members of their clad. Kind of going along with what Garrett mentioned earlier, smaller dinosaurs were probably covered in feathers, but then as they grew up, they lost them because they no longer needed the extra insulation. Yeah, it's similar to how some birds have warmer down feathers when they're young, and then as they grow up, they lose the down in place of larger feathers that aren't as insulating. So that may have been true in dinosaurs, too, which is kind of interesting. So you might have had cute little sauropods covered in fuzz. I don't know. (laughs) So a little bit of an explanation on proto-feathers. Basically, their bristle-like structure is instead of what you'd think of now as a feather. So... A protofeather is almost like a hair on an animal, and their exact purpose isn't entirely clear. So they may have been used for display or as a bit of a heating blanket, but it's not really clear exactly how or exactly when they evolved. So just to emphasize why finding these fossil feathers on Calindodromius is so special is because Maria McNamara, who was a researcher at the University College Cork, said that feathers and hair are rarely preserved in fossils because scavengers tend to remove them from the dead animal. 
So one reason why these fossil feathers may have been preserved is because there were a lot of volcanoes in the area. Although scientists found a bunch of calendodromius bones, this does not mean that they all died in a mass catastrophic event. Uh, most of their bones that they found were of juveniles, so they probably died separately from one another. But what probably happened is when they died, they fell to the bottom of the lake where they were found used to be a lake, and then they were covered in ash after an eruption. And this ash preserved their feather imprints. So obviously this is a roundabout process of fossilizing softer material, which is why fossils of feathers are pretty uncommon. So on Calendodromius, there are three types of feathers. The first type consists of the hair-like filaments that we talked about being proto-feathers, and those were on the trunk, neck, and head of Calendodromius. They were about three centimeters long, and they resembled what they call dino fuzz, <laughs> which has already been seen on theropods. The second type of feather were in groups of six or seven downward projecting feathers, and they were up to one and a half centimeters long and originated on a base plate. So these were present on the upper arm and thigh of Calendodromius and are also present on theropods. The third type of feather is the one that's unique to Calendodromius. It's the one that's found on the lower legs of Calendodromius, and it consists of bundles of six or seven ribbon-like structures, and they were up to two centimeters long. Each of the ribbon structures is consisted of about 10 parallel filaments up to 100 micrometers, or one-tenth of a millimeter wide. So the original Calendodromius research was published in a paper on science called a Jurassic Ornithischian Dinosaur from Siberia with both feathers and scales. And later, there was a comment on a Jurassic Ornithischian Dinosaur from Siberia with both feathers and scales. And in that comment, there were claims by Lingham Solaire that the feathers were actually just degraded collagen. But Pascal Godefroy, the original researcher, said that this critique failed to explain the phenomenon around the body. Basically, the comment peer review piece described that some of the feathers were in a random orientation and could be compared to degraded collagen and scales that we see in other species and in other examples. But there were still a lot of feathers that were oriented in an arranged pattern, and those were not explained by the response piece. And all of this is found in response to a comment on a Jurassic Ornithischian dinosaur from Siberia with both feathers and scales. So it's kind of an interesting back and forth going on between the scientists, and that's what people mean when they talk about peer review articles. So Calendodromius definitely didn't use feathers to fly, and it's unclear what it used the feathers for. So we mentioned it may have been used for insulation or display. So as the title of the original article mentioned, Calendodromius definitely had scales as well as feathers, which is a little bit unique. It had arched scales that formed rows on its tail, but it also had feathers all over the place. Just as there's three types of feathers, there's also three types of scales. There's overlapping hexagonal scales that are up to three and a half millimeters in diameter that are present in the lower shins. There's also small, round, non-overlapping scales that are less than a millimeter in the cross section that cover the hands, ankles, and feet. And the top of the tail is covered by five rows of arched rectangular scales that are each one to two centimeters. So the scale surface was smooth and not that thick, less than 0.1 millimeters. So as we mentioned, the Calendodromius family is Neoornithischia, which means new ornithischians, and it's a clad of the dinosaur order Ornithischia. Neoornithischia was first named in 1985, and they're united by having a thicker layer of asymmetrical enamel on the inside of their lower teeth. So a lot of times the things that actually define a group of dinosaurs are a little bit obtuse like this. But the teeth wore unevenly with chewing and developed sharp ridges that allowed the Neoornithischians to break down tougher plant food than other dinosaurs. So that's really what makes them their own unique group. 